a lot going on in the baseball world and a story that almost disappeared. Let's talk about it. What's going on, everybody? Hopefully, you're all having a good day. It's Friday. It's almost a weekend. Hopefully, you all had a great week. Real quick, if you haven't yet, if you are new to this channel, please subscribe to my channel. Please like this video. Share this out with anyone you know. I would greatly appreciate it. I am on the road to 600 subscribers. And for those of you that have subscribed, thank you so much. It means the world to me. So let's get right into it. So we almost forgot about the story that was talked about a month ago with Shohei Otani and his former translator, Ipe Mizuhara. And the story was all over the place when it first broke out. Everybody was talking about it. Uh, people were, or fans, should I say fans, were frustrated, angry about uh, Shohei Otani and, and his translator and all, you know, all the money that was taken out of his account, the illegal gambling, you name it. The fans were buzzing. All right. Two, three weeks passed by. You don't hear anything. Nobody's talking about it. Shohei Otani is still playing baseball. There were stories that broke out about that he did know about the money that was taken out of his account. Then later on, it was the story was changed, saying that Shohei Otani didn't know. So his translator, Ipe Mizuhara, the story came out yesterday. And let me pull it up uh, real quick. Sorry. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So this was on MLBTradeRumors.com. All right. So it says that Otani's former interpreter charged with bank fraud due to theft of over $16 million. All right. So the story is here and I'll read it off. It says U.S. Attorney Martin Estrada announced today that Shohei Otani's former interpreter, uh, Ipe Mizuhara, has been charged with bank fraud to a finance to finance a uh, voracious appetite for illegal sports betting. Hopefully I said that word right. Uh, per Sam Blum of The Athletic, Mizuhara is alleged to have transferred more than $16 million from Otani's account to an illegal sports book per Aiden Gonzalez of ESPN. The full 37-page complaint against Mizuhara was relayed by Megan Cuniff of The Washington Post. All right, and then the story then continues saying, per Blum, Estrada says the account was set up by Mizuhara in 2018, and he began illegal gambling in 2021. The bets do not appear to have been made on the sport of baseball, Estrada says. At this point, Mr. Otani is considered a victim in this case, Estrada added, per Fabian Ardaya of The Athletic. Mr. Mizuhara lied to the bank to access the account, lied to them about being Mr. Otani. Estrada also said, per Bill Shaken of the Los Angeles Times. When Mizuhara won a bet, the winnings would go into his account and not Otani's per Blum. Strata says investigators have viewed text messages from Mizuhara where he admitted to stealing from Otani as relayed, relayed by Ardaya. So, you know, I don't know what to make of this story. I'll be honest. You know, to say that he went to the bank and lied saying that he was Shohei Otani and he was able to take money out of Otani's account. Something seems really fishy about that. All right. With Otani saying that he didn't know that much money was taken out of his account, I find that very hard to believe. I find that very hard to believe. If five, if $20 goes missing out of my account, I notice it. All right. To not notice millions of dollars being taken out of your account, I, I again I find that very hard to believe that Otani did not know any about any of this. I feel like this is, you know, with, with his former translator, Mizuhara, I feel like he's the fall guy. And the blame is going on him. And I and I feel like there's a there's a cover up here. Despite what the investigation has is saying, despite the evidence that's out there or you know, that's presented to us, I feel like Otani has a hand in this. And I feel like he's gonna walk away clean. That's the way I feel about it. You know, again, how does 
somebody have access to your account and is, is able to take money out of your account and for these wire transfers to go down for this money to be uh taken out of your account i mean you have to sign off on it right because my other question is going to be was uh mizuhara's name on otani's account even though it says that he lied about being uh shohei otani so then uh, it makes me wonder about about the bank and their credibility you know there's a lot of questions here now mizuhara is being charged by uh with federal crimes right and now they're saying otani's a victim you know sounds like Otani is going to walk away clean from all of this. It sounds, you know, from based on the reports, it sounds like he has no involvement and he's innocent in all this. But again, I do not buy the story. I, I don't buy that Otani's uh, innocent. And that's not to say that I dislike Otani. I, okay. I, I want to set the record straight. I like Shohei Otani. He's an excellent player, one of a kind player, a rare player. All right. I give credit where credit is due. I give credit where credit is due, but I still feel that he was involved within this incident. And he's he's just going to walk away clean. That's the way I feel about it. You all may feel different. And if you feel different, please let me know. Load up the comments. Let me know in the comments. But I'm not buying the story. I'm, I'm really not. You know, it, he, he was involved. Because, again, the original story was he did know about it. Then it changed to he didn't know about it. So something seems fishy about this. I'm not, I'm, I'm just some things are not adding up. So Mizuhara is being charged and Otani is a victim according to the reports. But again, I feel like Otani is still a victim in this. All right. Or not a victim, but I feel like he's a, he's a suspect in this. And, you know, I, I feel like he needs to be investigated as well. Again, I, I'm not buying the story. Thing, things are being, thing, things are being, things are confusing, and uh, the reports are just not adding up. But that's the way I feel about it. I'm gonna go ahead and just move on from it. So we'll see what else happens with this story as uh, time goes on, and I'll, I'll talk about it. I'll let you all know. All right. Now, uh, Jordan Montgomery who we who many of us thought that he was going to have a long-term contract a team was going to pay him and it was a disastrous offseason for him and not only for him for other scott boris clients too uh scott boris misread the market he got a little greedy i think he got a little too big-headed for his own good and teams other teams just fought back and said, no, we're not, we're not dealing with this. We're not dealing with you and your demands. Basically told them, go kick rocks. All right. And, you know, Montgomery, what did Jordan Montgomery ended up doing? He ended up changing agents. So he dropped Scott Boris. And now he is with Joel Wolf and Nick Chanick of the Wasserman Group. And that was bro. That news came out by ESPN's Kylie McDaniel. So I can't blame Jordan Montgomery for what he did. If I was in his position, I would be absolutely frustrated. I don't know about you. I expected him to get um, a, a long-term deal, maybe not a seven-year deal. All right? I know he was looking in a, in a, in a co for a contract uh, the same as uh, Aaron Nola of the Philadelphia Phillies. But there was no way... I didn't feel that he was going to get that type of money, even though he pitched well after he was traded to St. Louis by the Yankees a couple of years ago. And um, he was then traded to the Texas Rangers and he had a big contribution in their, in their world series victory. You know, he, he showed what he was made of. He's a durable guy. I like Jordan Montgomery. I always have, you know, I, I was sad to see him get traded. Um, and again, I, I understand why he was traded, but that's a story for a different day. We can we can have that discussion on a different day. But in terms of him dropping Scott Boris, I cannot blame him for dropping Scott Boris. Scott Boris, again, screwed his agents over. He screwed his players over. He got greedy. He got a little too big headed for his own good. And didn't get the result he wanted. And now his his big clients signed short term contracts with 
high high AAV. They have there's some opt outs in there as well. But he hurt his clients. He hurt his clients. Plain and simple. And I, I'm surprised his other clients, such as Blake Snell, Cody Bellinger, I'm surprised those two players did not drop uh, Scott Boris. Maybe they will later. You know, we see that Jordan Montgomery did, and rightfully so. You know, hopefully for Montgomery, he hasn't pitched in the pitched yet, but hopefully he does well for Arizona this year, right? Hopefully, you know, he he finds success this season, and he's able to, you know, find some sort of like long term contract. Even though, for what he was looking for this off season, nobody was going to give it to him. Right again, and that that's the that's the Scott Boris effect, and uh, I just think that clubs ball clubs had enough of Scott Boris and his demands, and told him to you know kick rocks and said you know come back and be more reasonable. And here we are, and we got late into spring training, and guys like Jordan Montgomery are still not signed. That's a problem, you know. Late into the off season. Beginning of spring training, middle of spring training, you still have some names that aren't signed. That's a problem. That's a problem. And, you know, Scott Boris got what he deserved. Good agent. He, he's good at getting client his clients money. I'll give him that. But this time around, uh, he got humbled. And now Jordan Montgomery dropped him. And now he's with uh, the Wasserman group. So... Hopefully, with his new agents, they're able to treat him well, find him good deals, reasonable deals, and he doesn't have to face this uh, scenario again where in the offseason he's without a team, especially as spring training get, especially during spring training and as spring training comes to an end, which in, that's about when he uh, when he signed. But that that's that has to be very frustrating for a player to be without a team when spring training is happening and when it's about to come to an end and when the regular se regular season's right around the corner and you don't have a team, that's not right. That happened to Dallas Keuchel, right? That happened to him. And he signed in May with the Braves and look what happened. He, his career was never the same again, right? Hopefully that's not the case for with, with Jordan Montgomery. Um, Again, I hope he does well in Arizona. So, you know, we'll see what happens when he uh, when he makes his debut with, with the Diamondbacks. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the struggles with Aaron Judge. There is a lot of question marks about Aaron Judge. There are some people that are saying that he might be hurt, uh, that he has that oblique injury. If you ask me, and I was on Hector's live stream yesterday in the morning, I don't think there's an injury bugging him personally. I don't think there's anything wrong with him. I think that he's just off to a slow start. And historically, he starts off slow. He did miss 10 games in – or 10 days, should I say, during spring training. So he missed a lot of time. So he's he is playing a little bit of catch-up, all right? Um, at the moment, all right, he's batting 178. Yeah, it's not great. It's not a great batting average. He's struggling. There's no doubt. The only positive thing, the one positive thing that I will say about Judge right now, he's drawn walks. And to me, a walk, walks are just as good a, or are just as good as hits. So there, there is that. But he does need to step up. I feel like he will come around. Remember, John Carlos Stanton was struggling in when the season started. All right. At one point, he had a 125 batting average. He started coming around. All right. There's a few other guys on the Yankees that are that are struggling. Glaber Torres, you know, he's struggling a little bit. Verdugo, you know, he's struggling a little bit. But I feel like he, he's coming around. Uh, the you know Austin Wells, uh, Jose Trevino, they're struggling. All right. I think there's a lot of focus on Aaron Judge because he's the he's the captain and he's a big name on the on the New York Yankees. And that's why a lot of folks are a lot of the attention is on him and a lot of folks are concerned. And I understand. Yeah, he is struggling, but I don't think the injury is a concern. I don't I don't think he's injured. I, I just think that he's trying to find his groove. But once he finds his groove, watch out. Again, he, historically, he does struggle when the season starts, but then he, he picks it up. 
right? Some some players start off cold, and then they start playing well later. You know, eventually, right? Later on, but he'll he'll come around, right? Aaron Judge, I'm I'm confident that he, he will come around. He'll start hitting. He'll find his groove. So, you know, I know it's hard to do, but all we could do is just be patient and 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 wait and hope that he does perform. All right. Um, maybe he'll come around in this series against the, against the Cleveland Guardians, who they're who the Yankees are going to play starting today, and they have a three game set. We'll just have to wait and see. Just hope for the best, prepare for the worst. That's that's really my advice to all of you. But we'll see what happens, right? And the Yankees are ten and three, so let's also keep that in mind. Even though Aaron Judge is struggling, other players are stepping up. Whereas previous years, if Aaron Judge was struggling, this team wouldn't. This team would be struggling. This team would not be playing well. They wouldn't be hitting well. They wouldn't be pitching well. This team would be a complete disaster if Aaron Judge was playing bad. But luckily, 2024 New York Yankees have players surrounding Judge that could step up. Where in previous years, Judge had to be the guy to step up. And if Judge was playing bad, the rest of the team was playing bad. This time around. It's different, you know. You have Juan Soto, who's been ste- who's been stepping up. Um, you know, you have Anthony Volpe, Oswaldo Cabrera, John Carlo, as of recent. All right, so you know, be patient, stay tuned. Um, things are gonna things are gonna work out. You know, Aaron Judge will come around. Um, you know, again, he missed ten game or ten days during spring training, so it does have an effect. But his bat will show up. All right. That's all I got for now. Um, I just wanted to share my thoughts on all the reports that have been coming out and give you my opinions on it. Load up the comments. You tell me what you think. You tell me whether you agree or disagree. I want to hear from you. I love reading your comments. Um, it, it, it makes me happy. I get. I love interacting with all of you. So... Um, that's all I got for now. Any other news comes out, I'll definitely let you know. <clears throat> so if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. Please like this video. Share this out with anyone you know. I would greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time.